It's a big week five. We're talking matchups. We're talking all of our starts of the week and who are not just who we're confident to start, but who are we scared to start in week five? Make sure to check it out. Today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. Now, that's not an exaggeration. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft. Soft. And flexible. Flexible. They literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor and head to Muggsy.com. Grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y dot com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your first pair of Muggsy jeans. This is Melvin Gordon from the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, hey. You know, Mike, every single... What's sing- that, Jason? <laughs> every single episode... <laughs> This year, since your first It's Football Time, I've said It's Football Time in my head, and I know the people listening. Every time that that music plays, they're saying, It's Football Time. <laughs> that's the Thursday edition of the intro, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's that's outstanding. Yet again, we take another stride. We make another stride in the history of podcasting. <laughs> time and time again. It's a real fun thing to do, just when there's... There's music, there's there's no words over it. Yeah. Just make up your own words. Yeah. It's real fun. Especially when they're that spectacular. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> into the show. Can't, can't help the greatness, fellas. <laughs> Thursday, October 3rd, the Fantasy Footballers back again. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers on YouTube. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we appreciate all the reviews that have come in this year from the Foot Clan supporting the show subscribing reviewing all that stuff helps our independent podcast and we appreciate it so much that we're giving away a signed saquon barkley jersey mm-hmm. from pristine auction you can go enter to win a signed superhuman jersey apparently saquon barkley foot clan giveaway.com is the url foot clan giveaway.com he's not been ruled out for this week he, it's a four to eight week timeline before we get into barkley just for the people if you've already entered the completely free giveaway, we have added more options. So if you've already entered, make sure you go back because you can get more points, more raffle points. That's right. To get you the superhuman jersey. Now, now back you, to the superhuman. If you wear the jersey signed by the superhuman. Of course. You, you Im- become. Yes, imbued all the powers. That's right. And if you get a high ankle sprain, you too can run with a high ankle sprain. <laughs> because he can for some reason. I imagine if you wear it. It will cut down any prognosis proportional to what it's cut it down for him. A normal four to eight, he's going to be back maybe in two. So you get the flu, that's like, what, seven to ten days? You're probably back in two to three. You get a cold like me, it's four to seven years. Right. That'll be cut maybe. down to like, you might be well in a year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to, uh, hold on, Foot Clan giveaway? Not <laughs> bloody likely. All right. Quick question of the day. We've got matchups on the show, by the way, the fantasy forecast. We've got starts of the week. We've got the boom, boom kicker. We've got news, but here's the quick question. Who is the scariest start for week five? Confidence is a tricky business in fantasy football. We talked a lot in the office yesterday about players like Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs and uh, even even DeAndre Hopkins. We had our footcast, our exclusive episode of the show, the bonus episode for the Foot Clan yesterday. There must have been 50 questions about Trading for or trading away DeAndre Hopkins because confidence is at an all-time low after three bad weeks. So who's the scariest player to put into your lineup week five? Uh, Look, I'm going to stick with the title of the question. It's Scary Terry. Uh, He is the scariest not only because of nickname, but the reality is, (laughs) I I mean, I, I don't think you can start him, even though he's been phenomenal. He's a guy that... You have to start when he's out there on that's the field. That's Terry Bradshaw. That is ter- that's right. Terry Bradshaw, multiple Super Bowl victories, right. MVPs. Uh, Wouldn't play him. Right. Do not play him. No, Terry McLaurin, the F1 himself, 
wide receiver rookie from the Washington Redskins. If you have him, you've been starting him. He's been amazing. He was out last week. Well, he's practicing. There's a good chance he plays this week. And I do not think you can play him. You're going up against New England with what Jay Gruden says that they don't have a quarterback, which he is right. Uh, so this is more of a non-start than it is a scary start. You well, can't you can't even put him in your lineup with trepidation. I think there are situations like I'm in one where the, he might end up in my lineup, and trust me, bro, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I. I know you guys are both surprised with my pick here. Yes, we are. I am very surprised. We'll talk about it later in the show. Spoiler. It's Melvin Gordon for me, guys. Week five, Melvin Gordon makes his debut. Austin Eckler has been arguably the most impactful fantasy football running back, and he's been heavily involved in the passing game to the tune of like leading the National Football League and yards after the catch. He's been excellent. I just personally... Don't know what the proportions are going to look like in the effectiveness of Melvin Gordon in week one. I say it's a scary start because, of course, you got to start Melvin Gordon when he's active. You guys have way more confidence than I do that it will be a big week for him, whereas I think, I don't know what I'm going to get out of him. So it's a little scary for well, me. Well, and this, this is why. I mean, I'll, I'll just spoil it now. He's going to be my start of the week later. Th your fear. Your scary start of the week? Your fear is why I made him my start of the week. Because you want to give me going, confidence. I want to I tell you, like, look. You, you should start him. You have to start him. He's a good start. I'll tell you the reasons why later. But as Nick Diaz would say, don't be scared, homie. Okay. Thank mm, you. I, now says. I feel much more comfortable. Mike? Mine is the player I want to talk about. He's also going to be featured in the news and notes section because what the heck is going on with Stefan Diggs? He has been close to horrific for fantasy football. Until this past week, because, of course, the matchup in Chicago, he goes off for 7 for, for 108, but his target share has been gone. He is very frustrated with the offense. And possibly MIA, we don't know what's going on with Stephon Diggs. I will say this, and uh, we'll get into the news, but he, he's been dealing with recurring injury, multiple injury situations. If you watch the game, he was banged up. I tend to think is more tied to that, but we'll find out. Uh, Coach Anthony Lynn just now said, Melvin Gordon will definitely be a part of the game plan. Here's his quote. He will definitely be part of the game plan. He may even start the game. So that's exactly why it's sure. scary for me. I don't think that there's a uh, guarantee here for Melvin Gordon to have 50% of snaps, 30%. I don't know. So I sure. look forward to your narratives later on. Let's go ahead and uh, move on. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. So Diggs didn't practice Wednesday. We saw Jalen Ramsey choose not to practice for injury, miss the game. Well, this was undisclosed. Yes. This, though they're, they're saying it was not an injury reason that he missed the practice. He just wasn't there. Ian we, can't, we can't talk about it. Yeah, Ian Rappaport tweeted that his frustration with the organization has been palpable. He was not at practice for non-injury reasons. Teammates are left wondering if he even wants to be there. The team has been adamant about the fact he's not available for trade, but things are coming to a head in Minnesota. If this team starts losing, watch out. Now, if they start winning, everything gets better when you win. Well, course. the good news is they play the Giants this week, so I think they've got a... You're talking about the team that has the exact same record as them, Jason? Yes. Oh, undefeated with their new quarterback. Um but yes, yeah. that is very good news for them. <laughs> right, but the Vikings still get to play them. So what is this? As, when I am in these situations, because I, I mentioned on the show yesterday, Emmanuel Sanders, some trade rumors, right? And it makes sense for Denver. Like, Emmanuel Sanders is one of their older players. Chris He's Harris the, is one of the more valuable players. Last year of his contract for yeah, Manny Sanders. It makes sense to move these guys if your team is not heading the right direction. Owen Ford, from what I understand, not the right direction. So... It makes your, your brain start moving as a fantasy owner. And I say, well, I you know, do I still want Sanders? Because if he's traded, what's his value? Does he get the target share that he's getting right now from Joe Flacco? Also, ooh, is Cortland Sutton a buy? Because if Sanders leaves, Sutton is the guy. What happens here with the Diggs thought? I mean, do you go after a guy like Adam Thielen right now? You could buy Thielen as low as you could ever buy him. Now, right. I offered Emmanuel Sanders for Adam Thielen yesterday. I was turned down. But... 
Do you go after a guy like Thielen on the off chance Diggs is shipped out of town? I right. would personally go after Thielen. We argued about this, Mike and I did, on the footcast yesterday. I believe you were not in favor of going after Thielen. I am in favor of going after Thielen. I think this squeaky wheel will get the oil. I don't think this team this is going week, to throw. This week, I agree. Well, I'm not just talking about this week. I'm talking about rest of the season. I, I don't think it's possible for them to have the run-pass ratio that they've had so far on the year the rest of the season. That's not to say they're going to turn around and all of a sudden be a team that's throwing the ball a lot, but they are astronomically low uh, on passing the ball, and this is this is a player and a quarterback that it's not like it's new. right? Adam Thielen and Kirk Cousins dominated for eight or nine weeks Different last OC. year. Different OC, but my point is same human beings throwing and catching the ball to each other. I think much brighter days are well, more Kirk Cousins to Thielen than Thielen to Cousins on the throwing that, and catching the ball. That's true. It's yeah. not to each other. Yeah. I guess that's fair. Um, but yeah, I, I am uh, I am buying low on Adam Thielen, and and if Deggs gets traded, it's great news for both of these guys because right now there's not enough volume to be split between those two guys, and if Diggs goes somewhere, his value has nowhere to go but up. I I can't imagine they trade him. Well, they they've said he's not being traded but the people say that and then and guys get traded i'm yeah, just you don't mike zimmer has no patience for anything if, if right if stefan diggs misses all his practices and holds out guess what I mean, he's gonna want to jettison him like they just gave him a huge contract he's one of the best young wide receivers in the league he can be a franchise wide receiver for this team for years to come but if you're stefan diggs and like i yeah you're happy you got your money your your generational life-changing money but you also want to be a good football player, and you're not going to get that opportunity the way that things are going in Minnesota. All right, we need to move on because we've got fantasy forecasts coming up and a lot of news to get through. Christian Kirk, the ankle injury, unlikely to play in week five against the Bengals. Larry Fitzgerald obviously is a good start in this matchup against Cincinnati. You're going to have Trent Sherfield and Keyshawn Johnson on the outside. Uh, they re-signed Farrell Cooper. You're not very excited about what's happening in Arizona in general, but in week five, Christian Kirk is not going to be available so you can make your adjustments as you see fit there. I don't know how much you guys downgrade Kyler Murray because of the absence of Kirk. Not not really, but the the sneaky start, probably more of like you're looking at a, a DFS tournament, would be Keyshawn Johnson. I mean, Christian Kirk is getting a lot of targets, and the Cardinals are not going to slow down, so that volume has to go somewhere. All right, Damian Williams returned to a full practice. The, the Damian Williams thing is so bizarre where – he, You're saying because he hasn't eased himself back in, and all of a sudden he's back. It, that and just I mean, he went away. You weren't even 100 percent sure what what is the full injury, what is the extent of it. I like, didn't even remember who he was. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to people who believed in Damian Williams, but I mean, he just he he retracted into the shadows, and now all of a sudden he's back, and and, and is going to it's going to affect what's going on with the running back position he, for Kansas City. He's actually Big a time. decent trade for a target right now. People that have him, they were disappointed in the beginning, and maybe you could go buy him uh, cheap. All right, and then Tyreek Hill returned to a limited practice. This is a great sign. He's. I don't think he's going to play this week. I expect dude. next week. But this is this is great. Outstanding news for the Chiefs, and it's also maybe a sign for fantasy owners to – if depending on what you believe about Sammy Watkins with or without Tyreek Hill, this could be a chance to sell Watkins. More so, Demarcus Robinson, McCall Hardman, their value takes a monstrous hit when Tyreek returns. So you're playing with borrowed time on those two players. Emmanuel Sanders, quad injury, limited at practice, dealt, dealt with a contusion in Sunday's game, says he's good. I think it's a great sign that he was limited on a Wednesday. I expected him to miss practice, so I think he's okay. Yeah, he's totally fine. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure the three of us watched last week him completely rupture his Achilles. Yeah, we watched the season in game, injury, yeah. And then, then he was back out on the next play. <laughs> he, <laughs> did you see what he did in between plays? <laughs> no. Put on the Saquon jersey. Oh. oh. Yeah. So yeah. that's where we got it from Sanders. Yes, yes. Pat Shermer reiterated that Saquon is possible for Sunday. That's, Stop. That can't happen. No. You can't do that to him. Don't get your hopes up if you've got Saquon. He's not playing this How week. How about you go buy Saquon? Sure. Yes. Because he's going to play sooner than later. It's not going to be no eight weeks. That's think, for sure. I think the timeline to buy him super cheap might be over it with might all the be. news yeah. coming yeah. out, though. It is. Mike Williams limited in practice. Once again, he has not been healthy this year. Sam Darnold, are we expecting him? He hasn't been I'm cleared not. for contact. 
Adam Gase is saying he's the one that has been playing. It's it's like Adam Gase is trying. You know when you try to will something to happen. Yeah, it's like well, hey, look, it's if the I'm, secret. The if, spleen looks fine to me. Right. Yeah. Oprah. Oprah and yeah. Gase are like just put him out there and they'll clear him. But I don't. But think, my spleen. I don't think the timeline <laughs> coach, will allow coach him my spleen. <laughs> to play this voice. play this week. Obviously, if he gets cleared, he's full go. He's been practicing, but he's practicing on a non contact basis. I expect that he doesn't play this week, but it's all a matter of how the testing goes for his spleen. On Fridays, we do in and out. We'll give you our official prognosis, what we think is going to – that's not the right word. Our prediction. Yeah. Our official prediction of what we think is going to happen, players in or out. That will include Jarvis Landry, who's still in the concussion protocol, heading into Thursday. Uh, that will include Tevin Coleman, who didn't practice Monday. We have not had official reports. John Ross – is on IR now. That one is official. That one's official. Dontrell Inman on IR. Chargers try to lose one to three offensive players per week. That's kind of the that's the plan that they're, they're on. They're doing it. And they're pulling it off. Good for you, Chargers. For the first time in eight years, the Patriots will have a different place kicker. Steven Goskowski is in place on injured reserve. He had missed four extra points and a field goal. So they've signed Mike Nugent. Mike Nugent. You'll have to wait <laughs> that is for the name. boom boom kicker to see oh, if no, he is in fact not. the boom boom of the week. Is this just because you have a new player to rhyme with? And Pugent been... rhymes with Pugent. <laughs> That's true. I was, I was racking my brain trying yeah. to figure out how you're going to work this one in. Very well, excited, Jason. Let's get yeah. Just hold your breath until we get there. All right. In and out tomorrow, as I said. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss a single piece of impactful news. Get the Sleeper app today. Before we get into the match, I just want to thank today's sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new one, Burrow. you got to check out Burrow Furniture. And look, we know what the best part of the fall is. It's football. But you don't want your, your keister rested on some ugly old busted couch. You got to check out Burrow and upgrade your situation. Burrow sofas can handle the rowdiest game day hangs with their their kiln dried Baltic birch frames. Whoa, now that's I mean that's very fancy stuff. Durable fabric that's naturally scratch and stain resistant. Burrow is totally customizable. You get the fabric color, the leg finished armrest style and length that you want. You want a chase lounge or an ottoman? Boom, Burrow's got you covered, and the sofas. This is sensational. We live in a the world of the, f the future. Technology is here. USB charger right there, built into your couch. It's ridiculous. I just set up a burrow chair last night, and look, we've all had the really frustrating furniture to set up. Not this stuff, man. Cake. Real easy. Just even for you. It's gonna sound crazy, but click, click, boom, you're done. If you've ever set up a burrow, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just a few steps, you can get it. You look. And they've got uh, a free one-week shipping, so you can be set up by the next game day. This football season, don't settle for your same old couch. Settle into a comfy new Burrow sofa. Get $75 off a new sofa and free one-week shipping at Burrow.com slash footballers. That's B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash footballers for $75 off a new sofa. And Foot Clan, look, two-thirds guys – like myself, experienced noticeable hair loss by age 35. And most guys assume that uh, losing their hair, look, it's just inevitable. As you age, what you might not know is that there are FDA-approved solutions designed to stop hair loss and in certain cases may even regrow hair with Roman. Roman makes it convenient to get FDA-approved hair loss treatment over your phone or your computer. Just go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit with a licensed doctor from the comfort of your own home. And if the doctor decides treatment's right for you, their dedicated pharmacy ships treatment to you with free two-day shipping. If you want to stop or prevent hair loss, starting treatment early is the key. And with Roman, you can find the best approach to help you keep and maybe even regrow the hair on your head. Roman is giving members a free online visit and free two-day shipping when you go to GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers footballers fantasy forecast all right fantasy forecast then our starts of the week coming up the lions the dolphins both on by we'll start with the bills titans matchup the bills at three and one take on the titans they're two and two 
games in Tennessee. The Titans are three-point favorites. This game has a mm, yuck 39-point over-under. That gives an implied point total of 21 points for the Titans, about 18 points for the Bills. This is why Mike and I made both sides of this game our streaming defenses yeah. of the week. This does not expect to be a high-scoring game. No, no, I'm not excited about much here, guys. But we know we can start Derrick Henry each and every week. He has been a workhorse. He has been sufficient despite low pass-catching involvement. He's the running back eight on our consensus rankings for the week. So this is this is a really good matchup for Derrick Henry. It's it's basically the the tailor made matchup for him. Really, I, I believe so. I disagree. Okay, so let me make my case okay. for you. This is a, ge a game that's not going to get out of hand. The Bills are not going to just go and all of a sudden put up 30 points and they're going to be down and they're going to have to go to Deion Lewis. This is a low-scoring affair where you know D Derrick Henry's been on the field for 75% of snaps. The only worry you have with Derrick Henry is that, oh no, they're down and they've got to go to Deion Lewis. Well, I don't think that happens in this game. And then you look at the defense across the field. The Bills are great. They're phenomenal for today's NFL. They just made it difficult for the Patriots. But that's because they stopped the pass. They are excellent against quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends. But their one weak spot is running backs. And it's, you know, certain teams, we, we put in, in, in our research for these shows, we look at the trends of this season and we look at last year. And so often with defenses, they're completely different. Last year is identical to this year with the Bills. They were great in the passing game, but they it's it's a running funnel defense. They're saying, go ahead. Try to beat us with the run. That's what we want you to do. We just don't want you to pass on us. That's what the Titans are going to try to do. I am 100% in your corner on this. Derrick Henry had 27 carries last week. There are There's pretty much one guy that can do that, and it's Derrick Henry in the NFL. And by way of uh, product of elimination, volume – is why the Bills have given up some points in the running game. It's just redundant. Oh, you know, you, you have to run the ball against them. Derrick Henry can run for three a carry against Buffalo. I don't care. I think he's going to get 25 carries in this game. When he does, they win. That's the recipe. They're favored. I'm all aboard Derrick Henry. I'm not saying I'm benching Henry. I just, like, the Bills, when you look at their fantasy points against the running back, I think it's not telling the full story because you can look at what who have they faced – Le'Veon Bell, he was 17 for 60 on the ground. That's very, very ho-hum fantasy numbers. Le'Veon Bell scored through the air. Six receptions, 32 yards, and a touchdown. Then they played uh, against Saquon Barkley. He is superhuman. He does not count. He crushed the Buffalo Bills. Then who's next? Joe Mixon, 15 for 60 on the ground. He did his damage through the air. Sony Michelle, 17 for 63. Like Guys who can't catch the ball, Like I think that they're in their – is the possibility for them to be in trouble. Where the, where All I'm saying is the, the Bills, where they are, what are they, 20th against fantasy running backs? I think that's not a true right. true telltale sign of who that defense actually is against grinders. I, I agree with you in the sense that you look at James White was really one of the running backs that, that did in the Bills last week. But to Andy's point, you know, you brought up Mixon, right? He was 15 for 60. Well, you're disappointed. But if he gets 25 carries... Sure. Yes. You're going to be fine. Volume could overcome. Because we didn't we actually didn't make any water bets last week and because I'm feeling frivolous today. Oh. I I'm willing to bet. If anybody wants it, I'm willing to bet guarantee via water bet that Derrick Henry scores a touchdown in this game. Who? Would anybody uh, do you want to take that bet? No, but I but I mean, if odds are against me on on the on the course of the year probably. Sure. I no. Okay, well then, I, I did my best. You did try. I did try. Oh, so I think I short fields are a possibility. Josh Allen, whether like, he's coming back off the concussion or you have like, If Barkley. you're super confident and be like, Derrick Henry's a top five 75 and a touchdown. Okay, I'll take that. Bet. Oh, yeah. Water bet. We needed something on the line there. Now, how helpful that debate was, I don't know, because if you have Derrick Henry, I think you're starting him regardless. Sure. Here's some tough decisions that you have to make, though. In a game with this kind of over-under, on the road, quarterback conundrums in Buffalo. I mean, Matt Barkley might end up starting this game, but Josh Allen did participate in individual drills. 
Regardless, do you have confidence in John Brown, Cole Beasley, Frank Gore, any of the options in Buffalo? The Tennessee defense is pretty good, and they're at home. Confidence, no. no. Yeah, not really. I yeah. mean, there, there's a situation where you could, you know, if you're in a double flex league and you need to throw in Cole Beasley in a PPR, sure. Yeah, I got 13 targets last week. In a full PPR, you're okay there. But uh, there's really – you just brought up the wide receivers. I'm not confident in Frank Gore in this matchup on the road against a good defense. Certainly not going to play Devin Singletary if he's back. He only stands there to, to hurt Gore. There's really – almost no bill that I want to play. Even if Josh Allen is in, I'm not in love with the wide receivers or Josh Allen in this matchup on the road. All right. Are you dynasty leagues? Are you interested in Dawson Knox acquisitions right now? Sure. I mean, okay. it's tight end is tight end is really tough. And Dawson Knox is, he's seeing volume. Let's see what happens though. When Tyler Croft, the, their free agent signing actually gets to play. But Dawson, Dawson Knox is, he's showing up, man. We, you're 67 not, yards two weeks ago, 58 this past weekend. One of the reasons I didn't want to pick up A.J. Brown in redraft leagues was because they have this matchup on the docket and you don't chase points with Marcus Mariota unless you want to be sad. So Brown, Davis, benching like, those guys. Like a dog chasing a car. That's what chasing Marcus Mariota points is like. Delaney Walker, do you start him? Yeah, you might have to. I, I, th I think you. I think you pretty much have to. You don't love it because well, by our, by our rankings, you don't. We have him at tight end fourteen consensus wise. He's been rough. Do you take a shot with somebody with more upside? I mean, you'd play him over Dawson Knox in this game. Yes. Yeah. The the problem is the guys in front of him are most likely owned. The only one I could think of, I mean, Mer maybe Eric Ebron's on the waiver wire. And then Tyler Eifert is certainly on the waiver wire. Other than that, though, these you're stuck. You're playing him. I would play definitely. Walker. I would play Ebron over I over well. Walker. So, um, <laughs> Stephon Diggs just came out a quote on reports he wants to be traded. Quote: "There's truth to all rumors. I won't be speaking on that." <laughs> oh my goodness! You just spoke on it, you dummy. <laughs> That's. That's great. I'm not saying I want to be traded, but I'm not saying I don't want to be traded. And I won't talk about it. Yeah, that's wow. that's not good, man. Look, that's a not wide good. receiver doesn't want to go to NASCAR because that's not what he does. He right. wants to play wide receiver. And right now, he's on a team that does not allow him to play wide receiver because they only run the ball. I just want to know what is happening behind closed doors because it's not normal to have two wide receivers show public disdain for what's happening if there it just seems like there might be a disconnect between Kirk Cousins the person and Adam Thielen the person and Stefan Diggs the person this is a 13 and 3 team with Case Keenum Pro Bowl Case Keenum yeah and sometimes I mean I think that's Case Keenum's one spot that he fit in the right way and and that they believed in him and I don't know what's happening but that ninety million dollars puts you in a really, really impossible position, right? As a as a franchise, so he did return to practice today, though. So there's truth to all rumors, Mike. <laughs> that's, I've been told. I I don't think that's true either. I don't think all rumors are true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good point. Right. Andy. They definitely are not. Yeah. But when someone's asking you about a rumor you may have started, yeah. then you know. Falcons one and three take on the Texans two and two. This game, uh, the Texans are a five point home favorite. It's a forty nine point over under. The game looks a little brighter than the one we just talked about. You got Matt Ryan v Deshaun Watson in the home games for Deshaun Watson this year. He has zero passing touchdowns total, but Atlanta has allowed a top uh, three top ten quarterback performances in a row. It has not been pretty for Atlanta this year. And they're down Keon O'Neal, their superstar safety. When, yeah, and, this is and, bad. Uh, the, what's wild about defenses is you have situations like this where you lose just one key piece and then the house of cards crumbles. And uh, this is your your buy low window on DeAndre Hopkins is about to slam shut. This is – it's the trifecta, right? We had Mike Evans a few weeks ago. Then you went, it was Devontae Adams – now it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins. This is the get-right game. All the stars are aligned. So if you're trying to buy him, you better do it now. I tried to. I tried to buy him. Tried to give some Tyreek Hill and you know as. Uh, oh, you got rejected, huh? Of course. Of course you did. Yes, it's called sample size. 
We have sample size on these players. They're really, really good. So four weeks is not a career to find. DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, love them. This is a get-right game for me. I would be taking the Texans and the points. No almost upset. I think Houston gets right in this one, sends Falcons to a dangerous one and four haze, and that's not good for players like Devonta Freeman. Right. Not good for Calvin Ridley. We've seen this team basically make the decision that we're going to be giving Muhammad Sanu more targets, snaps, than fantasy owners want. And Austin Hooper has been piled on in terms of targets. That leaves very little for Calvin Ridley. I'm not excited about Calvin Ridley. I don't think he's a bounce-back candidate this year. Mohamed Sanu averaging six-plus targets a game. Austin Hooper leading all tight ends and routes run. Like, can, do we Are we to the point where we really should be giving Mo Sanu the wide receiver three type of love? We, I mean, week one, five for 57. Week two was an absolute turd. But then six for 75, nine for 91. Like, that's three the, of four weeks over 50 yards. They, look, if you look five at, plus receptions. If you look at Calvin Ridley and Muhammad Sanu, they've basically just taken turns being the guy. Week one and week two, it was Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley was the wide receiver 25 and the wide receiver 8, while Muhammad Sanu was 52 and 78. And then the last two weeks, it just flipped, you know, where Calvin Ridley's 109 and 60 and Muhammad Sanu's 36 and 14. Calvin Ridley's the more talented player. Calvin Ridley's the more invested in player. I, did, I think Calvin Ridley he's is going explosive. to bounce back, and he's going to have a good rest of season. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I think you can trust him. I think I'd, I'd rather go out and play uh, some players that are in a better situation where I just don't know if I trust what this office is doing week to week. Even Julio Jones had a rough week last week. So... Um, Maybe we'll end up with some Calvin Ridley related uh, yeah, I think rest of season to. bets. Not that I would bet on Muhammad Sanu. I'm not crowning Muhammad Sanu. I've seen enough of him over the course of multiple years. We've had that conversation 13 times. Muhammad Sanu will run off two games in a row, and everyone's like, oh, is it time for Muhammad Sanu? Fair. Well, who it is time for right now is Austin Hooper. It is. Yeah. Tight end two on the season. He's a must start. Kenny Stills, unlikely to play. Austin Hooper's the tight end two? That is correct. What? All right. I am vetting yeah, and confirming. I'm calling that impossible. No, it is. Look. What? Week I think one, the word you're looking for is factual, Mike. Uh, week one, he was the tight end six, then the tight end 15. The last two weeks, he was the tight end two and the tight end one. Yes. I refuse to believe. Austin Hooper showed the signs last year, taking a step up this year. At the end of the day, with this offensive line, Matt Ryan is not finding Calvin Ridley deep down the field. He's finding Austin Hooper in the shallows. All right. I refuse to believe. We'll talk about Will Fuller <laughs> later. At the running back position, I don't want to leave without talking about the incredible Carlos Hyde. Uh, you can't start him, can you? I certainly don't want to start him. And you, that's what's important. Can you? He's, yes. Talk he, about scary starts. Yeah, that, that he would qualify. I mean, look, he's at home in a matchup favored to win. He's had a couple of big weeks. But, you know, that week two where he got 20 rushing carries, that appears to be the outlier. Yeah. 10, does. 10, 12 in his other three games. I'm staying clear of Carlos Hyde. In case you're curious, Duke Johnson's snap count is up to 65% last week. He's also at 6.3 a carry on the year, which is what he does. I think the trend is going to be towards Duke Johnson because Carlos Hyde, we've seen this. It could be. I mean, Carlos Hyde, is, when he comes into a team situation, he just must be an incredibly charming person because he shows up and there's always better guys behind him, but somehow he gets to be the guy. He brings the Starbucks. Yeah. Day one, shows up with it. He's got the donuts. He's yeah. like, hey, what's up, everybody? Give him the oh, back this, massage. This Carlos Hyde is a fine, upstanding man. What up, coach? <laughs> yeah. How you feeling today, man? Unfortunately, you the, give me those carries, coach? It takes about three weeks to figure out what <laughs> the truth is, whether it's in Jacksonville, whether it's in Cleveland. Cleveland? So that's what I mean. It's, it's very strange. Yeah, don't right. trust Carlos Hyde. Ravens, Steelers. Ravens are 2-2, two and two, Steelers 1-3 and three this game has the Ravens as three-and-a-half-point road favorites. Man, you know what? Oh, really? Do it. No, I'm not doing it. Oh, yeah. you were disappointed. Right. 
I thought about it. Man. I did think about it. I'm on board. I was pretty impressed with Pittsburgh last week. I'm you know on what? board. Yeah. Andy's almost upset of the week. This is this is based on trends right now. Pittsburgh, their defense has looked much improved over the course of the past two weeks. They seem like they are focused. They found some things that worked on offense and shut down Cincinnati. And the Ravens go in the opposite direction, especially on defense. Lamar Jackson hasn't been elite uh, by way of the passing game, although he has certainly been for fantasy. And Stupid Willie Sneed garbage time touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, you know, these games already extremely competitive in division. I think it's going to be tight. I think the Steelers can probably hold on in this one. I would. It's a 44.5 point over under. I would take the under in this one. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, the way the Steelers' defense has been playing, the, the Steelers are, I mean, they're, they're just a well-run organization. They're well coached, and they know they're not the same team they were. And they've kind of quickly changed their identity very quickly to be a team that is. I mean, that you saw that last week: sixteen passes to the running back, trying to dink and dunk their way, keep you know the games slower. Uh, you know, it's basically like trying to run the ball more. And uh, yeah, I, I I think the Steelers pull this one off as well. Now that being said, I'm taking the under in this one. It tells me that. There's not a lot of players I'm excited about. I don't know if I'm chasing Deontay Johnson's two touchdowns. Vance McDonald's questionable, may or may not play. James Conner questionable, didn't practice on Wednesday. I'm willing to flex Jalen Samuels with the potential for him to be a great start with James Conner missing the game. Outside of Jalen Samuels and probably an obligatory Juju Smith-Schuster has to stay in my lineup decision. <sighs> Uh, I'm not excited about other Steelers. Do you guys agree on that? Do you have a different yeah. take? Are you willing to flex a Deontay Johnson? Samuels, Connor, and Juju Smith-Schuster. <laughs> That's it. It's gotten so bad you can't even pronounce his name. Oh, uh, look. he He's another – I know you guys might disagree on this one, but he's another guy that I would go out and I would try to buy low. He's – Oh, you're talking about Juju? Yeah. I I still believe the talent will I feel like, overcome. I feel like yesterday – you were not that person. Uh, the the he got a good sleep. The the reality is. Did you look at the, the star chart? The more yes, I I looked up at the stars and I saw. Oh, here comes Jupiter. The star had been born. Here comes Mars. Look, he is very talented, and uh, you know they're not. Even though I say okay, they changed their identity. They passed the ball sixteen times to running back last week. That was just a really good game plan. They're not going to be able to just do that same no, they thing will not. week in and week out. And that was against the team where they didn't need to do much to get the win against the Bengals last night on Monday yeah, night. Yeah, but if, if you can't do that week in and week out, that does not mean that you can do something else well. And that's the problem. Just because some team decides to stop that or stop some of that, that doesn't mean that doesn't turn Mason Rudolph into Ben Roethlisberger overnight because they make him drive the ball downfield. We saw some of that against San Francisco, and it was ugly. So... Maybe that maturation happens, but I don't know how you can buy. I mean, what are you buying him with? Are you trading Tyler Lockett away to get Juju? Mm, no, no, I think Tyler Lockett no. is too. Are you trading Tyler Boyd to get Juju? I, if I could do that, I definitely would. Would you trade Sammy Watkins to get Juju? I would trade Sammy Watkins to get Juju. I would rather not think about it. Okay. I don't think I want to think about Juju very much this year. Well, but, you're, you're lost, hey. applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> nonsense booby pants <laughs> your lost applesauce i'm just this is exciting for me because i thought that the that me and you were done debating juju and there wouldn't be more water bets to that end and now i know that there will be yeah all right the raven side of the ball you're starting lamar you're starting ingram ingram's uh the rb5 on the season but it has been kind of a, a up down up down situation but the steelers they can be beat on the ground i yeah. think ingram gets enough done in this game Marquise Brown averaging eight and a half targets per game. He's still a buy low for me. Put it on record. I like Marquise Brown more than Juju. So for this game or for rest? Oh no, of for season? the rest of the season. Well, you can put that one on the bird. Wow. Water bet. I think I like Brown more. Thanks. You want Mike. in? No. Come on, Mike. No. You can do it. I don't have to be in on that one. You do have to. No. Dang All right. It. I tried. <laughs> You're trying to. You, I'm not. I just wanted meat a shield. I wanted a friend. You're not a meat shield. I already took the bet. I just wanted a friend. I'm just. I'm. But I'm with you. That, you wanted a Thelma. <laughs> I. I. I am with you that on Marquise Brown. There's too many targets, and Marquise Brown is too 
electric for th- this downtrend to continue. Brooks reminds me that we should occasionally make a water bet uh, explanation or, or explain what we're talking about. If you go to wheelofwater.com, does that work, Brooks? Have yeah, you, have you verified that? Or you can the get app. the we, yeah, you can get the app on the App Store. We do these water bets week in and week out where uh it's a frivolous quick way to put something on the line. We film the payout, you spin the wheel. There are a bunch of humiliating ways to have a cup of water poured on you. And correction, do not go to wheelofwater.com. Just download the app. Be, are you saying because of the photograph of the three of us on there? Cuz it does work, but it, you don't want to see that picture. <laughs> if you want to see Mike with a man bun and me about 50 pounds ago, go to wheelofwater.com. Wheelofwater.com. <laughs> oh, no. I feel fine about the photo. Yeah, you look pretty much the same. <laughs> All right, Mark Andrews, you're putting him back out there. He's got a 23% target share. You have to play him Yeah, because he's a tight end. But I'm, I'm expecting the Steelers to, to compete in this one. Patriots 4-0, Redskins 0-4. They have chosen to play this game. There was some talk of just skipping it and uh, counting it as a 30 to nothing shutout. They're putting Brady in, though? Yes. You I know think how you sit your starters once you're up enough? That's like pretty much z- oh, zero zeros. We're, I'm up sorry. we're up enough. I'm sorry, Washington fans. This has been rough, but it's getting rougher. The Patriots are 15.5-point favorites. Puts them at 29.3 points. The Redskins at 13.8. This is why Jason said you can't start Terry McLaurin. You cannot start any player on the Washington Redskins except for the flex consideration of Chris Thompson. Jason explained yesterday he doesn't believe Chris Thompson will be that effective, that they'll keep him in front of the defense. I just think it's the nature of targets. I just think Chris Thompson will do enough to get He's you. He's a PPR f- guy. Like he'll have Ten enough points res- in, in the flex. Yeah, he'll have enough receptions to get it done. The Patriots have been helped by the most cake schedule of all time. But this continues. This is not a uh, this isn't a zig to the zag of the season. No. Nope. And you look at what the Patriots they're number one against quarterbacks, number two against running backs, number two against wide receivers, and number four against tight end. They're top five against all positions. You're starting your Patriots defense. You don't start a single Washington anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe a Chris Thompson flex because they're going to be down thirty, sure. Confidence level in Sony Michelle this week. We have him as our pretty run, decent. running back 25 on the week. We actually have James White at 24. So those two players on that fringe running back two, running back three area. So fairly confident, Mike? Fairly. But yeah. A little crack in the voice kind of situation. Because it's – look, if, if you are out there with a 100% supreme confidence in Sony Michelle, then we need to have a discussion because I want to learn – why? I want to learn. <laughs> no, I want to learn your ways, like because yeah. you are clearly a very confident person. Sony Michelle has been put in a positive game script every single week, and he has not not really come through for his draft stock. We've you spent know? a lot of time talking about why Son- you know Sony Michelle has been in the position where he should. These should be great games. They're they're always winning, right, Jay? I mean, yeah. they're, yep. They're they're in the lead, but it's not been pretty for Julian Edelman. It's not been pretty for, I mean, Edelman's finished 28th, 53rd, 18th, 56th. That's the, not been worthwhile. Josh Gordon, since his week one, which was on the fringe of the top 24, 85, 31, 47. I am excited for Josh Gordon this week. That was the name I wanted to bring up. He's a guy that if, you know, I, I, I could have made him my start of the week in the sense that he is a fringe guy that you haven't known. Should I start him? Should I not? This matchup is perfect. Really? You I think like so. It. Yeah, Josh wow. Norman is going to be on him. Josh Norman, if you remember the name from years ago, he was once good at football. He is no longer. And I think uh, I think he'll be exploited in this matchup at home. I, I like Josh Gordon as a play this week. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think I, I have a hard time deciding between, you know, Gordon and Dorsett. I'd rather play Edelman than either of those two guys. I can agree with that, but I think all three wide okay. receivers are in play. Ben Watson, is he in play for his debut? No, but he's he's on the radar. I think you take you 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 keep him in mind. Maybe pick him up prior to the week. Stash him. Little glance over at him on the yeah. waiver wire. Give him a little wink. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Hey, what's up, dude? What's up? Do you wink at dudes when you say what's up? <laughs> well, hey, you Mike, look. How's this feel? <laughs> that, well, that, it feels awkward because you're not a winky type. No, of I've guy. never winked. I don't even you're know if a, I'm doing it right. You're not a winky fellow. There, are there winky guys? Oh I mean, yeah. Oh what? I'm more of a twinky guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
head. One hundred percent. Yes, <laughs> there, there are. There winkers. are the Winkies and the Twinkies. There, there are Winkers out there, and look, there are, there are, there are certainly. Is there an age that you get to where winking is a little bit less awkward, though? I mean, yeah, sixty. If you have gray hair and you're no. and you're a winker, there's, yeah, there's not like, an age. There's just you got to grandpa like good, good job, chap. No, no. I'm, I'm, my point is, you got to be able to read the situation because it just takes one bad wink and you got to get out of the game. It's good to know that Winkies and Twinkies is going to be part of the show title today. That makes me feel happy. Thank you, Speaking Jay. of Twinkies. Speaking of Twinkies. <laughs> I've got to leave. <laughs> got a date with little Debbie. <laughs> Are you going to wink can, at her? Yeah. Do you wink at little Debbie? <laughs> no. No. All right. <laughs> but as long as you do the, <laughs> the you, finger guns. You, yeah, when you go finger guns with the sound combined with the wink, then everything is okay. Yeah. All right. Nothing is okay. <laughs> Start your around Patriots, these parts. pitcher, Redskins. Next game. Cardinals, Bengals. Hello, someone's got to win. Cardinals 0 3 and 1, Bengals 0 and 4, 47 and a half point over under. Bengals are 3 and a half point favorites. I'm ashamed to say I think the Bengals win this game and the Cardinals s- sad season continues. Kyler Murray, I think you can play him. He's this, always been a fringe wide receiver or a quarterback one this this year. Honestly, this entire game should be full of fantasy goodness. The Cardinals are the they they run at the fastest pace of play. The Bengals also play at a uh, at that higher rate of speed, and when you combine those things, that's a lot of extra plays, a lot of extra volume for your offenses. Meanwhile, the the defense on both sides of the field, these are teams we're exploiting for fantasy football. So both sides should be fantastic. Like I'm extremely excited for Tyler Boyd. The, to bounce back after last week's dud. He has the fourth most targets in the NFL. I chase those targets. No John Ross. You got to go Tyler Boyd here. Auden Tate. You could, I think, you I can think flex he's him. in play. I mean, because you lost John Ross, it really stinks in this game that you lost Christian Kirk and you lost John Ross. Right. Both of those guys would have been such good plays. But, Mike, you're right. Those targets are going to go somewhere. They don't just disappear and now the offenses don't work. That, that's where I think Keyshawn Johnson on the Cardinal side and Auden Tate on the Bengals side are names that when you're in those deeper leagues and you need a, a flex spot start, those are guys on your waiver wire that you could do worse. They're not going to goose. Golden Tate this week in his debut or Auden Tate? Golden or Auden? I'm going to go Auden. Now, it was pointed out to me that AU is the periodic table symbol for gold. Therefore, oh, you my have, goodness. He's gold. There's two golden so Tate. Gold and Tate, saying. yeah. Gold yeah. and then D E N odd. I mean, this what? is we we need a battle here, fellas. Uh, Tate Tate guys, we need to work this out. This is the kind kind of deep. Versus. This is what the Foot Clan's all about. There's some scientists in that group. This is research, man. Yeah, this is very important. Golden Tate versus. I'll like, take Auden Tate this week. Yeah, I'm taking the real I've Golden seen the Cardinals. Tate. Yeah, I've seen which the is Cardinals. Auden Tate. Because <laughs> the real gold. Is AU. No, you're blown away right now. The, because it's A-U-D-E-N. No, no, no. I get it's it. Golden Tate. Yeah. yeah. Incredible work, parents. Uh, <laughs> David Johnson, Joe Mixon, you're starting them both. We'll talk about Joe Mixon in a little bit. Uh, David Johnson's the RB8 on the season, third most running back receptions. That's going to continue. Why. That's going to continue for as long as uh, Kyler Murray is a rookie <laughs> and for as long as that offensive line is – a sieve. Do you guys know of any recent history of the Bengals just bleeding out to running backs catching the ball? Hmm. Like, like 16 times in you, one game yeah. with zero incompletions? Yeah. Yeah, I think that happened recently from yeah. my recollection. Goodness. Uh, so, Tyler Eifert, are you willing to take the shot on him? Uh, I know Jason is. I'm a no. I am I am definitely willing. We'll talk about him in a minute. And look, the, the Would loss you of, prefer me to say my anti Tyler Eifert stance now sure, and not yes. ruin your, say, because he, he's gonna be my start of the week. Tell me no no, I don't. You shut up. I'll talk I'll bring up the <laughs> negatives that you're gonna talk about. No, 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 so no. Then the ball's in your court. I, I'm just hesitant. Look, you, you could do worse. Eifert, they're trying to involve him more. I'm just not excited with 21 snaps last week. I'm not excited with the fact that you know you're counting on a guy that hasn't been fantasy relevant in a while. If you get a touchdown, you're going to be happy. The Cardinals are, they serve him up on a silver platter, so you've got plenty of arguments in your favor. I just don't know how far the like depth chart of relevant tight ends I go to give the Cardinals the uh, against the Cardinals they give up 23 points to the fantasy tight end, but DJ Swearinger's been released. If you watch 
what has taken place through the first four weeks. He's been solely responsible for these tight ends, and he's been solely irresponsible. So I'm DJ hope- Swearinger has been beyond atrocious, and he has played 100 percent of snaps in in these games, and they just flat cut him. So they are trying to make a difference against the tight end position. They obviously they've see been their, listening. Their, they've been listening their flaws. But I'm going to go ahead and say the backup to DJ Swearinger is yeah. not going to be the answer. We'll see. We will see. And the the counterpoint to the the Eifert talking about his snaps, I mean, that's that's who Eric Ebron has been. And when you – yeah, he's not on the field a ton, but he's getting at least a few targets, and the matchup is so juicy. Yeah, it's just a matter of if you have limited snaps, you have limited opportunities. If you sure. don't capitalize on them, you're at a far greater risk – Started starting Tyler Eifert, then you are Delaney Walker of getting goosed. Yes. your odds are much One, higher. Yes. Yeah. so you yes. take a risk. Now, is there? If you don't have an option, I don't take. I don't mind taking the shot. Last week it was one play to Eric Ebron. Right, Eric Ebron was the perfect example last week. He goosed you the entire game. Garbage time, forty-eight yard touchdown. You're the happiest man in town. Yep. So, all right, I'm excited for that game too. We'll see what defense can show up for five minutes at a time and and win the game. The Jags, the Panthers, both teams two and two. This game is in Carolina. Carolina's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. I had a real hard time. We do a, a weekly at the studio here, um, like a pick em, you know, an office pool. Mm-hmm. This was one of the matchups I'm st- I stared down and said, I know the Panthers are favored. It's t- This one's tough. Yeah. Who'd but if Gardner Minshew is I- active, and ha- I went with the Carolina Panthers. I went with the home team well, that's favored and, and the belief that their defense has been so good, and I, I talked about Carolina being a great streaming defense. It's a 41-point over-under. I just think that the defense is going to cause fits for Gardner Minshew, and I don't know if you know a couple plays in this game from Gardner is going to be enough to beat Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> so I it's going to be a close one. You start CMC, you start Fournette, you, you start to get into muddy water everywhere else for fantasy football confidence levels. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel hasn't been a great start to the year. We've got them outside the top 24 this week. Curtis yeah, Samuel. I think we may have them too high. Yeah, Curtis Samuel is a guy that I am uh, somewhat interested in in the sense that if you look at air yards and who's been really getting top-level air yards that hasn't really done it yet, hasn't broken out with those targets, Curtis Samuel's getting some deep shots. And so, you know, in, in a matchup that, Will they have Jalen Ramsey? I don't know. Uh, he is was not at practice again, and there's really no reason other than he's demanding a trade. So if he's basically going to sit out, then Curtis Samuel's interesting. If he's in, I'm worried about all the options because him combined with A.J. Booya, uh, <laughs> we, we know how good Jacksonville's defense can be. And we've seen D.J. Moore's target share just absolutely melt like the Wicked Witch since Kyle Allen took over. Weeks one and two with Cam, 10 targets, 14 targets. These past two weeks, two targets. In a game against Arizona, DJ Moore saw two targets. Yeah, he caught one for a 52-yard touchdown, but then five targets this past week as well. It, it it's, it's tough sledding for DJ Moore until Cam gets back. Are there other players from this game that you're interested in rolling out there? I will I will play DJ Chark as a wide receiver three or a flex play. Like we're four yeah. games in, we we have enough ev- evidence that Gardner's going to throw to him, and he's a deep threat. So I think that despite the matchup, he's still a low end play. When you got four three three speed, yeah, you can break something off. Well, how tall is he? Six, six three. Oh, so, yeah. Six he's, three. I think it's four three four. To he's, be he's got a wingspan too. He's a, he's a good looking player. He can fly because of the wingspan. I see. Yeah, because birds birds have wings, and that yeah, no, and I they get it. span, and that then then they can fly with it. Mm-hmm. Not all of them though, you know. He's also got hollow bones. We found out the other day that Jason thought otters had fins. <laughs> well, no, we found out that I thought an otter was in my a mind seal. was a seal for yeah. a second. So I looked up otters, and then I realized, oh, those are the cutest things on the planet. But they have hands, not they. You know, they paws. say hands, paws? but they're paws. Yeah, like they say, otters hold hands; they hold paws. Buccaneers, Saints, Buccaneers two and two, Saints three and one. Had a, had trouble with this game too. Saints three and a half point home favorites, forty seven point over under. Coming off the really impressive performance on the road from Tampa, up in Los Angeles, the monster performances from Winston, from Evans, from Godwin. 
I just think you can bank on production in Tampa in the passing game. Yep, uh, I'm in. You know, so I, I think Winston, Evans, Godwin, Howard. What do you do with Howard? Oh, Do goodness. you put yourself out of your own misery? Do you release him? Do you move on? Howard or Eifert? Howard or Jimmy Graham? What do you what do you want to do with O.J. Howard this week? If I had oh, Howard Graham. and Jimmy Graham, yes. I would go Jimmy Graham. Howard and Eifert is a legit, disgusting question that you have to say, okay, what you know, what what's the likelihood that one of these guys gets a touchdown? Oh, this year and last year, the Saints were pretty darn good against tight end and pretty bad against wide receiver. That's pretty much r recipe of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've been thrown to the wide receiver and ignoring – the tight end, and if one does get it, is it going to be O.J. Howard or is it going to be Cameron Brait? I mean, granted, you could say Uzama for, for Eifert, but yeah, as gross as of. it is, I think I lean Tyler Eifert due to the matchup. I still think Howard is going to have that, a big game soon. I just don't know if I want to be around to wait on it. I'm not dropping Howard. Because of how weak the tight end landscape is, I still believe the talent. Man. I know it's hard. Well, I know here, it's hard. Here's coming up for for Howard. You have uh, so you have the Saints, then you have Carolina, then you have a bye week, then you have Tennessee. Gross. So um, <laughs> that is rough. Why don't man. you Why don't you do this? If you've got OJ Howard, go look at other teams that have th no tight end. There's there's always four or five teams in every league that are just they're scraping off the waivers every single week to find a tight end. Look at the guy who picked up Tyler Eifert. And see if you could trade him the name of O.J. Howard. Just send him screenshots of last year. I'm not year. willing to move on. Sorry. No, no I'm not. Right. I'm not. Hey, obviously, if you have a better option sitting out there, if it was a Will Disley question, it's obvious. But I'm not moving on if, if I – I know I'm going to have a few catches from Howard. Howard, is, so far, I think has to be one of the top busts yeah. of this That's season. That's fair. That's very fair. And the thing in the back of everyone's mind is, well, Bruce Arians tends to have problems with tight ends, and so is this a real thing? It makes it easier to buy into the fact he's just going to end up a bust the whole year. Bridgewater, averaging 178 passing yards per game. Oh, fire. Yeah. Tampa Bay has given up 318 a game, although uh, that's because Jared Goff had over 4,000 in the last game alone. It's like, <laughs> it ups the average. <laughs> but it's like when a ro you know, you, the rock in a hard place, this is like a piece of paper meets a napkin. If something's got to give here, I'm going to bet on Bridgewater throwing for under 200. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I, I would agree I with am. that. Oh, I would oh. agree with that. Come on, this is going back a long time. Not to mention, they're running an offense that's based on a great defense. You can't let Bridgewater make mistakes, and you can't let him throw the ball too much, and guess what? It works. They win with that recipe. That'll be the recipe in this game, too. It's going to be Alvin Kamara. It's going to be a, a stone-cold defense that we saw last week or the hopes of it that we saw against Dallas, and they're at home. So, I, you know, what can you do with 178 passing yards? You can start your Michael Thomas. You can start your Alvin Kamara. And then in this case, as we move on to starts of the week, Mike believes you can start your Jared I Cook. Do. Interesting. Starts of the week. All right, let's start right there, Mike. Why not? Sure. Why not? Tight end start of the week. Yeah, and look, it, it is a little bit gross because of what Teddy Bridgewater has been doing. I'm just – Following the process. It's a little bit scary. And Jared Cook, he had six targets this past week. It's it's not the easiest thing to find a, a tight end who can get that many targets. And Tampa Bay is the second worst team against the tight end position. They're at home. You're talking about a 47-point over-under. It. I'm not forcing Jared Cook in there, but I think that he is, he's at least safe to get you a few points and has the option to – or the uh, – the probability to score a touchdown, it's in there. Yeah, and I've brought mine up already. It is Tyler Eifert. I know that it's somewhat low-hanging fruit and also gross in the sense that he hasn't been great. He is on every waiver wire out there, but I, I genuinely believe that the Cardinals, look, they've, they've known about their problem for weeks and they haven't been able to fix it, and I think because they don't have the personnel to fix it. You've got Tyler Eifert. He's already got a touchdown this year, and he <laughs> dropped a touchdown last week. We'd be feeling really different if he's already got a touchdown in half of his weeks, and now he's facing the Arizona Cardinals. It's, uh, you know, hopefully for us as Cardinals fans, uh, it will change. I just don't, I don't believe it will. I love Jimmy Graham this week. Jimmy Graham's yeah. my start of the week at the tight end position. This is opportunity more than talent. This is Jimmy Graham 
effective last week with Devontae Adams off the field. He will soak up targets. You're not going to see MVS soak up targets. It'll be – Jimmy Graham might very well lead the team in, in receptions, yards. He could. And touchdowns this week. He's tied for the league lead at the tight end position in red zone targets. They look to him down there. And without Devontae Adams, they're going to look there frequently. So, If you're looking for any one of these three, it's Jimmy Graham. Agreed. I mean, Jimmy, all three of us know Jimmy Graham, greater sign than Tyler Eifert or Jared Cook here. All right, then let's go to the wide receiver position where I'm going to go with Will Fuller. Will Fuller has the most air yards in the NFL without a touchdown. It's coming. I said it's a get-right game for Houston at home. I think they figure it out this week. Kenny Stills unlikely to play in this game, giving Will Fuller even more of a target share. He's on the field all the time. It just hasn't happened yet. I'm banking on it this week. Will Fuller, uh, I think you can put him in your lineup. I'd put him out there over Auden Tate and those type of fringe guys, Scary Terry. I'd be playing Will Fuller. Yes, I agree. My start of the week is Larry Fitzgerald. We talk about, hey, maybe Keyshawn Johnson gets a little bit more involved while Christian Kirk is gone. But you know who's definitely going to be heavily involved is Larry Fitzgerald. That's against the hapless Bengals defense in a game that should be back and forth, quick pace of play. Larry Fitzgerald's the wide receiver 16 on the season so far this year. He just uh, broke the number two all-time record for receptions, and he was depressed after the game because of the showing. I think he wants to come out and ball out. I'm making Larry my start of the week. And I'm going with a confidence play, just that boost, because – this wide receiver, he's on people's teams, and you're like, do I actually play this guy? It's Allen Robinson. I get that they have the backup quarterback, Chase Daniel, in there, but the matchup is solid against Oakland. And Chase, look, he's been very serviceable for for when he's had to fill in for Trubisky. We're talking a couple games last year. And this, look, look at last week against Minnesota, seven targets, seven receptions, 77 yards. We call that the jackpot. <laughs> Allen Robinson is just too involved. Seven, At least seven targets every single week. He's getting that the target share for Chicago. He is the alpha in this offense for the passing game, and I think you can start him. All right. Uh, you guys want to move on to the running backs? Sure. All right. Joe Mixon. I'm taking Joe Mixon. This is the breakout week for him. Arizona giving up the fifth most rushing yards in football. He's at home. He's looked the part to me, especially over the past couple of weeks. I thought he did well for himself against the Buffalo defense, did everything he could using the passing game. You haven't seen Gio Bernard on the field. This seems like a game where they're actually favored at home without John Ross. Joe Mixon is a confidence push yeah. for me. Yeah, and I'm giving a confidence push to make sure that you start Melvin Gordon this week. It's not to say that he's going to have his best game of the season here. He'll split time with Austin Eckler. Uh, I think we could share this one, sure. Mike. Uh, you could. My running back start of the week is Austin Eckler, and I completely love it. I I went to make my start of the week Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler, but you already had Eckler. You could start both of these guys. Look what Leonard Fournette did to the Broncos last week. The Broncos have given up over 600 rushing yards in four games. The uh, wide receiving core for the Chargers is depleted everyone's injured other than Keenan Allen. Melvin Gordon got back to practice last week. Justin Jackson is injured. Start both these guys. They're going to have great weeks. All right, and then quarterback. Mike, who do you have as your quarterback start of the week? I'm going from streamer to starter. I'm taking Jacoby Brissett as my guy. With the Kansas City matchup, they're giving up the eighth most points to the quarterback position. The over-under is ridiculous as it always is in Kansas City Chiefs games. And in our... NFL League One matchup, that's who we are going with. We are, we're playing Jacoby Brissett. I'm going to go with a little deeper mm, pick here. I like it. And it's actually Jimmy Garoppolo at home against Cleveland off the bye week. I think he's going to have an impressive performance, I believe, in that extra week of preparation and players getting healthy. And Dante Pettis. I believe in going to break out. Jimmy G. <laughs> finding a way. So I'm going to go with Jimmy Garoppolo, a little bit of a deeper play. He probably fits in that streaming category, certainly, but uh, I'm going to make him my start of the week. Uh, and I'm going to go a little higher up with Carson Wentz, a guy that I think Carson Wentz owners have not always known what to do with him, even though if you look backwards, hindsight being 2020, he has been top 10 in fantasy every single week. At this point, you have to consider him 
a guy that you start on every matchup, and this is against the Jets. It's a winnable matchup. You've got Alshon Jeffrey back. I, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine not starting Carson Wentz. All right, that's it for our starts of the week. One more very important, very well-researched, very astute, and very practical segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Oh, this week's a banger, don't be fooled. Coming off the bye, it's the Niners' Robbie Gould. I just realized, I, I guess it would have been counterintuitive to your, he's your start of the week. He should, he should be in the, the nomination for the scary start. Cause I good. agree. Yes. He must kick better in October. Am I right? Has he to. has That's to. Part, what do you think? I may, I mean, October is here and I may Gould my start of the week. This is deep dive research on kickers. Guys. You're, you're just realizing this right now, right? Jay? No. <laughs> What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> How dare you? All right. That's going to wrap it up. In or out tomorrow. The rest of the matchups. A reminder, game day alerts. You can find those at jointhefoot.com for all of our Foot Clan supporters. That's every week on Sunday, an hour before game time. You've got the Sunday Live on all of our social channels. So make sure you follow us. Go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, and you'll catch Mike an hour before kickoff live answering questions, getting you ready for week five, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A signed Derrick Henry jersey yesterday on Pristine Auction, JSA certified. Did it go for under 75? It sure did. 54. Yeah. Oh. 5405. <laughs> Derrick Henry jersey. Derrick Henry, don't do me dirty. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that is it for today's episode. Thanks for everything, Brooks. You bet. You're a good, beautiful man, Brooks. Yep. We'll catch you tomorrow. We'll see you next time, Footland. Goodbye. you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers today's episode of the fantasy footballers brought to you by mugsy jeans the most comfortable men's jeans ever made mike oh m-u-g-s-y you ain't got no alibi <laughs> To not have these jeans. <laughs> they got high-tech fabrics. They're soft. They're flexible. Do your legs a favor. Head to Muggsy.com. Grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com. With the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy jeans.